Welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Justin Tully. Remember those observatories on the top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii? Well, there are actually 13 currently operating near the summit. Nine are used for optical and infrared astronomy. Optical means visible light, so it would be more like what you're used to seeing through a telescope. And infrared astronomy looks at the infrared radiation emitted from objects in the universe. One observatory is used for radio astronomy, which means it's studying the radio waves emitted by stellar sources. And three of the observatories are used for submillimeter astronomy. That's submillimeter astronomy. The submillimeter wave band of the electromagnetic spectrum is between the far infrared and microwave wave bands. So there are all different kinds of telescopes on Mauna Kea, but the one we're going to look at is operated by NASA, the Infrared Telescope Facility, or IRTF. Like the name suggests, it's used for infrared astronomy, and this telescope hosts a mirror that is three meters in diameter. Originally, it was built to support the Voyager missions to locate and study the boundaries of the solar system. But its duties have grown, and now it's the United States National Facility for Infrared Astronomy. So it provides support for planetary, solar neighborhood, and deep space applications. Infrared astronomy is important. It will provide a great deal of information on how the universe was formed and what the early universe was like. How does that work? We can't travel to the stars or take samples from other galaxies, so scientists use electromagnetic radiation to learn more about faraway objects. Astronomers use wavelengths, other than visible light, like infrared, to study these objects and then apply computer technology to code the light with arbitrary colors that we can see. The invisible becomes visible. In space, there are many regions that are hidden from optical telescopes because of the dense clouds of gas and dust. But the longer wavelength of infrared radiation can pass through the dusty regions without being scattered. We know that our universe is expanding and most galaxies are moving away from each other. Astronomers have discovered that the farther away the galaxy is, the faster it's moving. An interesting thing happens to the light coming from these galaxies. The wavelengths get longer and shift toward the red part of the spectrum. This redshift is known as the Doppler effect. By the time much of the light from distant galaxies reaches our telescopes, the only way to study it is with infrared technology. And cool stars, those that burn at temperatures cooler than our own sun, do not put out enough light to be seen but all objects emit heat signatures, and infrared telescopes help astronomers detect these otherwise invisible objects in space. And speaking of cool, in spite of the very cool temperatures on the mountain, standard equipment on the IRTF includes cameras that are cooled with liquid nitrogen. This is important because the telescope is trying to pick up the infrared or heat signatures of objects in space, kind of like infrared cameras used by firemen in search and rescue operations. Cooling the camera helps reduce the external heat interference and makes the camera more sensitive. Another fact about this telescope is it's being used by astronomers around the world and they never have to leave home to use it. This telescope is fitted with a variety of electronic cameras and spectrographs and has been set up so that it can be controlled from anywhere in the world through a high-speed internet connection. Astronomers from around the world submit proposals telling NASA why they need to use the infrared telescope. If their proposal is chosen, the astronomer can actually sit in their office anywhere in the world and control the scope with the click of a mouse, while watching images being captured right on their computer monitor, just as they would if they were on the mountaintop. That puts a whole new spin on remote sensing. That's all for now. I'm Justin Tully. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on NASA Launchpad.